<laughs> Welcome to the Financial Literacy Workshop. Um, I won't take too much of your time, but I'm going to introduce to you Jacqueline and Jenna, who are from Grant Thornton downtown. They're going to help you learn how to file your taxes. So, welcome them. Are you wearing shoes? <laughs> For the video, we're going to use the microphone. Okay, we'll be, we'll be as loud as we can. Thanks for that. Um, so I'm Jacqueline, I'm a tax partner at Grant Thornton. Uh, Jenna it has been my very, very trusted personal tax return expert for a number of years. She's also a student here at King's. Um, and so today we're just going to walk you through what you need to know about taxes give you some resources so that you can hopefully file your own taxes uh, because there's really no reason that every single one of you in this room can't file your own taxes this year. Um, so we're hopefully going to give you the confidence to be able to do that and all the good reasons that you should be filing your taxes on a timely basis. All right, so that's, that's the game plan and Jenna is going to really be the one who is uh, giving us all the good stuff. <laughs> all right, so first of all, just so that we have an idea, who has filed a tax return before? Oh, okay, all of you. Pretty much all of you. Your, oh, have you filed your own? Did you have fun? No. Okay, okay, so we're gonna try and change. That's what we're gonna try and change. Why? Why, why didn't you have fun? An uh, enjoyable experience. <laughs> um, do you know why you file your tax returns every year? Like what the importance of filing is? To not get to, that's the most common <laughs> thing start. is to not get arrested. Um, I have really good news for you. If you didn't file your tax return as a student, odds are no one is coming to arrest you, nor are you getting on anyone's hit list. In fact, um, and don't take this as actual legal advice, nor the position of the government, but they're actually probably happy that you don't file your tax returns. Um, and the reason for that is most of you in this room, if you had any sort of employment income over the last year, would be entitled to a tax refund when you file. And there's a whole bunch of reasons as to why you would get a refund. If you don't file on time, you're not guaranteed to get your refunds. So if you're more than three years late on your tax returns, there is an administrative position that the CRA does not have to refund you a dollar of your hard earned refund back to you. So that's the biggest reason why you want to file on time um, is to get your refund back. The other reason you want to file on time is for certain credits that most of you would be eligible for. So um, I call it mystery money that just magically pops into my bank account. I don't know if you guys have that also. Um, but there are a number of different credits, GST credit, climate incentive credit, um, that come to you and the amount that you are given and your eligibility for that credit is solely based on the fact that you filed a tax return for the last year. So if you're not filing on a regular basis, you could be missing out on this free money um, that could make a big impact for you, okay? We have a few slides. Here we go. I just learned, actually, I don't know if you know this, but if you call them a PowerPoint, that means you're definitely over 40. And if you call it a slide deck, you're definitely under 40. Yeah, this is a PowerPoint. Yeah, so I'm not um, So. Uh, just, we can send these very exciting slides around for you, um, but just as a recap, if you want to file your taxes on time, mostly for your refund, but also for those credits that come to you. The other thing is future you could be very thankful that you filed your tax return because you're creating RSP room every single time you file your taxes. Are we familiar with what an RSP is? 
We have mixed results. It is a registered retirement savings plan. What does that do for you? Do you know? Basically, you save up money over time without getting taxed by the government. Okay, so it allows you to put money into this special savings vehicle, and your invested money earns dividend income, interest, it gets capital gains, all from being invested in things like Amazon or Apple or what have you. All of the earnings inside an RSP are not subject to income tax while it's growing. So it allows you to build up a portfolio of wealth without any income tax for you for retirement. And the, the benefit of not having income tax as it's growing is it ends up growing faster because you have a bigger base of capital that just keeps getting reinvested and reinvested. RSPs are really awesome for retirement. They've also been used um, as part of your financial toolkit for things like buying your first home um, or if you decide at some later point in time you want to go back to school. Both of those, which probably right now you're thinking there's absolutely no way that I'm going to go back to school. I just want to finish what I'm doing right now. Um, but Jenna can attest, sometimes you want to go back to school. Um, so uh, good thing to have in your financial toolbox um, should you need them. Anything you put into your RRSP, once you're actually earning income and paying tax, is a deduction against your taxable income every year. So you get a bigger refund for putting money into your RRSP. And that money gets to grow tax-free. So it's a pretty awesome uh, tool to have as part of your toolkit. The amount you can put into your RSP depends on how much you've earned over your lifetime. So you generally get 18% of whatever you earned in a year as room that you can put into your RRSP. You're probably not thinking about putting money into your RRSP right now, but by filing your taxes and reporting the five to $15,000 that you may have made during the year, opens up extra RRSP room that future you will be able to take advantage of once you're in a position to file or start planning for retirement or a home purchase or those kinds of things. So that credit for your RRSPs just keeps accumulating. So very helpful to have. So FHSA room, um, that's like the best of both worlds. It's a tax-free savings account and an RRSP. So you get a deduction against your income and you get tax-free withdrawal of the money. So it's like a, a hybrid. Um, my understanding is that is like a set amount of room that is given on an annual basis. Yeah, so it's not dictated by your income level, it is just granted as part of the, like being of a certain age, similar to a TFSA, once you become 18, room starts to create for you. So it's a really good financial tool. Doesn't have the same benefit in turn, or like filing your taxes is not necessarily a motivator to get that room available to you, similar to a TFSA. You could not file your taxes, but you still get your $7,000 of room for 2024. Um, so I'm not saying it's not a good thing. It's definitely a good thing. It just doesn't link to the filing of your tax return. Understand what I mean? Yeah, but does RSP not carry forward? RSP don't carry forward, yes. You are, so if you don't file your income taxes for 2023, you don't owe anyone any money, so you don't really have a requirement to file. You could leave your refund on the table and just say, I don't care, I'm gonna get 50 bucks back or whatever. No one's taking you to jail, but if you earned income, you didn't make RRSP room because you didn't file your taxes. Got it? I feel like we lost some of you, but that is okay. Lost or no? 
Lost or no, we're good. We're, we're back on track. Love it. Okay. We got the roof in. Two thumbs up. Oh, nice, nice. Okay. So we have talked about why we file our taxes. I think we're all fairly like, clear on that. It's most important to get organized, both for yourself or if you're getting some help. So there are a whole bunch of documents that you want to sort of pull together before you get started on searching out any programs to file your taxes or filing or going in to see Jenna, your resident uh, personal tax expert. You need what's called your T4 slip. So you would get um, a copy electronically or in the mail, depending on, on uh, who you work with, um, that reports all of your employment income that was earned during 2023. So that comes, it sh you should already have it by now if you were employed at any point in 2023, um, because those are due for a company to get into processing by February 28th. So you should already have a copy if you were employed anywhere of what's called your T4 slip. That is the important slip for reporting your income. So you don't have to worry about like going back and finding pay stubs or adding up different pay stubs from different employers. Every employer should give you a T4 slip that reports the total earnings for 2023, along with any amounts that they would have deducted for CPP, EI, or income tax. Okay? So every time you are paid through your job, your paycheck is far less than what you would hope it to be, thinking you, you know, a number of hours times whatever your wage is. And it is CPP, EI, and income tax that is being withdrawn that drives your refund at the end of the year. So they have accumulated those totals for you. All of that gets reported on your T4 slip. Jenna, what happens if we don't have a T4 slip? I don't need this. Uh, if you don't have your T4 slip, uh, you log into CRA online and it lives there. Has anyone or everyone been on CRA online? Let me let me get a let me get a thumb system. Okay. Have you made an account before? Never heard of it? Yes. <laughs> so if you don't have a CRA online account, uh, you can make one. It's like a free thing. You're entitled to your own information, obviously. But you will need a past uh, income tax return that has been filed because it asks you for specific line numbers and like obviously you need your SIN and stuff. But to make it is pretty easy. It's very straightforward. Like click this box, next, 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 and then you can access through there if you were to misplace your T4 or you can't remember whether you're supposed to get in the mail or online, but it exists if you don't have a physical copy. You can also link your uh, banking information login to your CRA account once you've started that process. So you don't have multiple logins and passwords to remember. You can just log in directly through most financial institutions and that will get you that same information. Um, Awesome. So most of your T4s should already be processed by the CRA at this point. So if you were to log on to your CRA account, there should be a nice little summary of all the T4 slips that were reported against your SIN number. They're not perfect. Um, so sometimes things take a little while to show up in your My CRA account. So if you think like, oh, I worked at Kings for a period of time last year, I don't see a slip from them on my CRA account just wait a week or so, um, it will come. It just, for various reasons that I'm not overly clear on, takes some time uh, to populate in some cases. Okay. The other really common slip that you should be on the lookout for uh, relates to any amounts that you would have gotten as a scholarship um, or withdrawn taxable amounts out of your RESPs. Um, if you were in a situation that RESPs were set up for you. Um, so that is on our list, it's our, called our T4A slip. Um, so if you're like, hey, what the heck? I've got some income, I don't remember getting any money, but your parents set up a, a RESP for you, there's a portion of what comes out of your RESP that is taxable. Uh, and so that's what is being reported on that slip and you have to declare that 
on your tax returns uh, in the year that that slip is generated. The other most common thing you are going to want to compile uh, before you get started on your tax return relates to all of your hard-earned money that you pay to this institution. Um, so there are tax credits available for you to the extent that you have paid tuition, which obviously you would have paid tuition if you're sitting here. Um, and that form that you're looking for is called the T2202. And Jenna's gonna let you know where to find that. Has everyone found one of those before? Yes. It's, uh, when I was first looking for mine, I was going through the Student Center for Actual UWO. Doesn't live there. You gotta log into your actual King's account and it's a different website. Don't know why, but it is. But that's where you can find it, just Student Financials. I think it's Kings. Yeah, I think it's, I, it, you can't find your But the T4A lives on King. Well, the T4A lives on King. Yeah. You got, yeah, it's mixed up. So the T4A is on King, and then 2202 is on Okay, log into both. Yeah. <laughs> that information everywhere. Sorry, comment? Um, so with the T4A, would it show up on your uh, CRA? It will show up on your CRA, yeah. But your 2202 will not. You'll have to do some school logging in either way. Um, on that form, you are given amounts that you paid for tuition for your two semesters, um, January and, and then the fall. If you had any courses over the summer, that's reported on there too. It also reports the number of months that you were considered a full-time or a part-time student in each of those semesters, all of which gets inputted for the purposes of calculating education tax credits. While we're on the topic, education tax credits are very commonly stolen from students by parents. Has anyone transferred their tuition credits to their parents before? Do you know why you did that? No, Okay, that's probably one of the most common questions that we get is, my parent wants to claim my tuition credit, is that good for me, bad for me, or indifferent? All tax credits are calculated at a flat rate, which means it makes no difference financially if you were to claim those tax credits or your parents claim those tax credits in terms of the amount of refund that your tuition and the number of months that you've been a full-time or part-time student generates. So it's not like you are going to get more money because you're a lower income person or your parents get less money because they're high income or vice versa, whichever way you sort of are thinking about those credits. Um, you can transfer up to $5,000 of your credit to a parent um, in any given year and they can claim the credit on their tax return. You might consider doing that because you might not have made enough income to actually get any cash back in terms of tax credits for 2023. So if you don't owe any tax because you earned less than $15,000 for a year, having a tuition tax credit isn't gonna do anything for you because it's not refundable, which means it will give you tax back that you paid on income that you earned but it's not going to give you any cash just by virtue of paying tuition. So you have to have paid enough in tax to get a refund back related to anything you paid for tuition. So some families will work out things where you transfer tuition credits to your parents who have paid enough tax so that they get the cash back immediately and then you reinvest it in your schooling or, or what have you. If you don't want to do that, no harm. Um, your tuition credits that you haven't been able to use, just carry forward, and then when you get to a point where you are earning enough to pay enough tax to take advantage of it, you'll start to get big refunds of the tax amounts paid in those years. And again, there's no games to be played in terms of deferring when you claim it uh, until you're making a higher amount because it's a flat tax credit If you do transfer tuition to your parents, 
do everybody a favor at the time you do it, give them a copy of your 2202 and sign the bottom because invariably your parents will get asked for a copy of that in July. You'll have forgotten that you did all this. It'll be a pain in the butt. Then we're chasing the CRA. Your parents are chasing the CRA. They're sending notices. It just becomes a gong show. Um, so do yourself a favor. Just sign it and hand it over if that's what you choose to do. Okay. Lovely. The other thing you may, that might be applicable for you are uh, rent receipts. So if you are paying rent at all, um, your GST credit and related benefits, so the Ontario Trillium benefit, is calculated based on how much rent you have paid. So you'll want to make sure that you are collecting rent receipts because any tax software that you uh, use will ask you a question, did you pay rent? You're going to want to say yes. You have to put your landlord's name into the relevant form, the number of months that you rented at whatever location, and how much you paid in rent. And that's going to drive some of that free money that we get the following year. Yes, sorry. I, this is the first time hearing of this. Uh, just because, I mean, I guess for a little bit of context, I'm not from Ontario. So I'm currently in residence here. So I've been told that basically if I rented a house via a residence or even just at a house along the side of Epworth or Richmond, it wouldn't make any difference because I would need to stay here on behalf of basically just making my house. So how exactly would I get a tax deduction if it's something I would have done regardless of So you're not getting a tax deduction. Um, what's happening is if you are a resident of Ontario for tax purposes, and it looks at where you lived on December 31st as a tax year. So if you're living in Ontario on December 31st as a tax year, you say, okay, I'm, I'm an Ontario person, that's who's going to scoop my taxes, and to the extent that I have paid rent, I'm eligible to apply for this Ontario Trillium benefit, um, and the Ontario Trillium benefit comes with your GST amount, so for those of you who are familiar with that good free money that pops into your bank account, oftentimes you see two deposits, um, but they come out on the same day, I think, um, and it's your rent that's driving that. Okay. Another question? It's more of a personal question. <laughs> uh, I don't, I'm pretty sure I can't sign up for that because technically I'm still out of the province, but if I would have lived here, this is like this match before, but I technically apply for it. Because it asked you how many months of rent you could, like, in the line of form, it's like your landlord, your address, your postal code, and then what the purpose of those payments are, because it's either like rent or um, property tax is another like drop down option, and then amount and number of months. And the thing is, like, every once in a while, a uh, higher income person would send us that information, we put it in, but then it gives you a notice saying, like, you make too much money, this is irrelevant to you, but for students, like it's likely that that would not happen, so you will get that like extra free money, even if you were only here for four months or whatever, and you pay a certain amount of money because you were in Ontario. Ontario will be like, here, thank you so much for giving rent to our rent system. You're poor, you're a single student, here's free money. Yeah. That, and that's what taxes is. A lot of times it's like, if you're single and you're a student and you're like kind of poor, here's some money. Here is some money. And we love that. We love giving free money. Yeah. And, and yeah. And my question would just simply be the same thing as I asked before, which is like, I would go home, for instance. Uh, I'm from Quebec. So okay. I go home to Quebec. And I wouldn't be here on the 31st, so would that be affected in any way? Maybe. I feel like we're on we're in offline yeah, territory. Yeah. Um, those are the big ones in terms of things to collect. Some of you may have made donations, so if you've got if you made donations, collect those receipts. Um, your parents may have been collecting medical receipts, or you may have heard that collecting medical receipts can be beneficial. Quite honestly, most of the time it's not beneficial. Um, you have to have medical 
costs greater than 3% of your income, and then every dollar of medical costs above that threshold translates to a medical credit, which you then get 15% of. So, it, right, and if you think about the number of like $11.99 or $4.11 dispensing fees for prescriptions that you might end up having to add up, in a lot of cases, it's not worth the two to three dollars that you're going to get refunded on your income tax return. So just use your own personal situation as a gut check. Like if there were big dental costs in a year, or you had a ton of physiotherapy that wasn't covered, um, or braces, or, or glasses, or those kinds of things that were big costs, then think about it. Um, but if you're in more of a like routine prescriptions and you're paying. 20% of the prescription cost plus a dispensing fee, odds are you're going to be very disappointed with the amount of tax you may get back as a result from the effort that you put in to add up 411 times 60 different dispensings. Okay. Yes? How do you say that is I don't know the answer to that question. Because it's new. Yes. Yeah. But, but they, they we can find out after this. I think there is, but I just don't know where I would find it. Okay. Let's. We can do some investigating. Okay. Once you've got all of this, think about: Did I pay any interest on my student loans? Because that's also deductible. If not, move on. You are ready to file your tax return. Filing itself now becomes very easy. It is not something we need to go to a professional accountant to do. Um, and we certainly cringe a little bit um, thinking that you would go to HR Block because there's tons of free software that is available for you to file. Um, are you familiar with Wealth Simple? They have a free platform. Um, there is actually, I'm going to turn around for you and pull up a government website that lists all of the free software available to you. Don't be uh, tricked into giving these companies a donation at the end because they might ask you for a voluntary payment. They're all intended to be at no cost, um, so all you really need to file your income taxes. So I'm going to pull that up. Okay, so for those of you on the video who couldn't see what I just typed in, I literally just typed in free tax software CRA, clicked the first link, scrolled down about a third of the way down the page, and there's this find a free or pay what you can software. I'm just gonna click open the, the page. have a ton of options with respect to what you use to file. I can't personally attest to one of these being better than the other. We have our own tax software that is very clunky and hard to use. Um, these softwares generally ask you a number of questions, like did you earn any money? Yes, you have a T4. Did you get a scholarship? Yes, you have a T4A. Did you pay any tuition? Yes, you have a 2202. Did you pay anything on interest or for student loans? Yes, you've got your bank statement to say that. And so it generally tailors where it takes you within the tax return, so you're only filling out relevant information. Your gut check on did I do this correctly or not correctly, take a look at that T4 that you have. On your T4, 
box 16 has how much income tax was deducted from you over the course of the year, you should be getting a good chunk of that back. If you are not, you probably missed something in filing. Caveat to that, if you're making uh, more than let's say $20,000, maybe you are not getting the full amount back, um, but use that sort of as a rough measuring stick. Those numbers I have just kind of pulled out of the, the air with the understanding that every person, the first $15,000 of, in of income that you earn in a year is not subject to income tax. Um, everyone has what's called a basic personal amount, which is a tax credit for just being a human and alive. Um, so that exempts the first $15,000 of income, so you, you should probably should be in a nice refund position just on the basis of that. With that, do you have any questions that we haven't already sort of like done? You guys poked me in the eyeball. Yeah. Um, for the medical receipt one, would that be only if it's been like in Ontario or if I'm in Canada, I guess? Canadian medical, yes. There are some exceptions, but they're very I think it's just sort of like important to raise the point that like especially with H&R Block, like their free software does take like a hidden deduction from your return before they give it back to you, so it's not necessarily like free. H&R Block takes a cut? Yeah, I think all of them do. If it's like free, if they take like a, a percentage. I feel like we should fact check that a little bit. I know H and R Block does for sure. I'm not. Like, I believe it for H and R. Yeah, I believe it for H and R Block also. Um, <laughs> like I feel like we have an H and R Block yeah. employee. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I do work for H and R Block. Oh, okay. um, we don't know anything about the H and R Block because we get people involved all the time, and our response is called when they come. There we go. I do, like, I, I view, personally used the free version of TurboTax, like, it's clunky in terms of the number of questions that it asks you, and it might feel frustrating. They are one of the ones that have asked, like, would you like to make a donation to our company at the end of this, in which case I answer no, um, and I don't feel bad about it, so I can answer no and not feel bad about it, but, uh, yeah, good, great, great point. So maybe there's a personal finance Reddit somewhere that will answer that question. amend your tax return if you find income later. Depending what's on your T4A, like it could be a scholarship that's not subject to income tax, or it could be an RESP grant that is subject to income tax. So whether the T4A is going to have an impact on your <coughs> refund really depends on what type of income is reported on there. You can adjust your tax return once it is assessed which generally takes about two weeks to get through the CRA's computer systems. They will issue a check automatically, unless you're flagged for some reason for like a, a pre-assessment review. Um, so if you're in the, the situation where you filed your income taxes, you're getting a thousand dollar refund, you find a T4A, CRA is gonna give you a thousand dollar refund, you're going to adjust your return you might end up owing $100 of that $1,000 refund back. So there might be some back and forth with the CRA. I would advise that you amend your return rather than waiting for the CRA to catch you because they will do a matching program. So they'll go into their systems and just run everyone's SIN number and they're comparing what was filed in your taxes to what they have in terms of documentation against your SIN looking for discrepancies. Um, and they're surprisingly very accurate with this. Um, they will then come back to you and say, oh, we gave you too much refund. We're also gonna charge you interest 
because we gave you too much money and the CRA's interest rate is 10% right now, which is very high. Um, so you kind of, you kind of want to just like fix any mistakes as soon as you can because it cuts down on that interest. Interest wouldn't be charged until after April 30th. So particularly if this is happening to you right now, not a big deal. Uh, just our two cents. You can also change your return on CRA online. So you don't necessarily have to go back to one of these free softwares. You can go on to the website, change my return, tell them what you want to change. And that's pretty instantaneous. No. Yeah, all of your all of your commute costs to school or to work are considered personal expenses. Um, so that that would not be the case. If you moved here for school and you moved more than forty kilometers away and incurred moving expenses, you can claim those. Uh, but your your day to day is is personal. Yeah, and maybe, it, can I make this um, someone who earns tips? Sure. Yeah, so there are a few jobs that you might have that are not employment income jobs. So either you're commission-based or an independent contractor, you're invoicing people directly, maybe you're doing house, like lawn maintenance or something for, for someone, or you are in the service industry and you get a large amount of your earnings and tips. All of those sources of income are not coming to you through payroll. Because they're not coming to you through payroll, no one is calculating on a weekly, bi-weekly, monthly basis how much you should be paying percentage-wise in income taxes or CPP. What that means is when you file your income taxes, you're going to be reporting income without reporting any income tax that has been all automatically deducted against that income. So in those cases, your tax filing is going to compute an amount payable on those earnings. You're still subject to that $15,000 exemption that I talked about, so it's not as though um, you're definitely 100% going to have to pay cold, cold hard cash and tax, um, but just something to be aware of that you may end up with not the refund situation because you actually didn't have any income tax deducted because of the types of income that you earned. Okay. Your um, forms that you might get are going to look totally different because no one is necessarily tracking for you how much you earn being a lawn maintenance professional over the summertime. That's gonna be something that you have tabulated for yourself. To the extent that you incurred costs in being this lawn maintenance <coughs> professional, you can deduct those costs against um, any income that you earn. Yep. Um, like how many years can you get away with not filing before they start to come after you? Okay, so fun story. Uh, <laughs> I had a lady, this is like fairly early on in my career, who hadn't filed taxes for 20 years. Nobody was after her. <coughs> Sounds good. But you know why they weren't after her? She had refunds for all 20 years. You know what she didn't get? Her money back. Um, so that is one of those cases where all of our friends that are part of the, uh, the government system were very pleased that she did not pay her uh, or file her taxes because that was just extra money um, for the government to use in their various programs. Keep in mind that matching program that I told you about. So if you're just not filing your taxes, the CRA's got has been investing very heavily in de data analytics. They're gonna reach out when it makes sense mathematically for them to reach out, so then you're sort of in a interest penalties 
world of hurt situation, so I am by no means recommending that you do what the uh, 20 year lady did. Like usually like most like free softwares will give you like an estimate on what your return is or if you like owe money. What if you were to just like file on when they owed you money? Would they then deduct the money that you're, you owe them from previous years? We are, I'm so, so sad that Jenna left because Jenna developed um, a fraud scale using wing sauces to describe like if it was like light, innocent, innocuous fraud to like something that was fairly spicy. Um, so I feel like you are like trending towards sriracha. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no, you have to report them as other income that you earned. Uh, the CRA can do what are called like lifestyle audits. Um, they are very aware of certain industries where there is a, a higher likelihood of cash transactions. Um, so service is a big one. Construction is another one uh, that is very cash based. And so they will make audit decisions around the industries that people work in. There is an other income, like other employment line that you can just <coughs> slap it in there. Yeah. You can also probably make a reasonable estimate and then you just live with the risk that like you could have been off by a couple hundred bucks and if, yeah, that is, that is like honey garlic if you're just making a reasonable estimate. Okay, that uh, hopefully was helpful for everyone. Um, you have apparently a lovely recording of our very off the cuff uh, tax advice. So take with it uh, what you will in terms of our very informal situation. Jenna is here all the time. So if you see her around, like she's very tall, she's easy to find. She's filed thousands of personal tax returns. Um, otherwise, thank you to your organizer and I'll pass back to you.